Hi you guys! Welcome back to another first impression video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Simplicity Spring Patterns. If this is your very first first impression video, welcome! This is the series that I have been doing for years it feels like, um, where I take a look at every single pattern in a collection, whether that is a seasonal release from the Big Five, or an entire Indie Patterns catalog. So we just look through all the patterns and I chat about them, give you my first impression thoughts on overall design. I look for, you know, glaring fit issues. We talk about fabrication and fabric choices that you might have for the pattern. Um, we look at the pattern's ease and assess if you're, you know, gonna have any trouble picking your size. And I don't know, we just, we just go to town talking about all the patterns. So, um, welcome. I'm glad you're here. It's always a good time. Check the comments. There's always a lot of really, um, interesting conversation going down there, but, um, okay, let's jump into it. We have very first pattern. I'm already in love. This is a Mrs. Dress with neckline and length variations. Um, sizing wise, six to 14 and then 16 to 24. So right dead set in the middle of the Mrs. size range. There is a four and there's also, they have a four, do they have a 26? They might have a 26 as well. Um, so they just chopped off the smallest and the largest. Why they can't just include those other two, I have no idea, but here we are. All right, so easy to sew dresses, love that. Have fitted bodice, A-line shaped skirt with or without side split, dress features, stand neckline or jewel neckline, waist cutouts, side pockets, and center back zipper closure. Okay, so we have the stand collar neckline or the jewel neckline that you can see here. Um, this really kind of interesting, almost, Kind of Western, you know how they have those little peaks, but it's not really reading Western to me at all. It's really reading kind of sweet. Um, and I think it's really cool that the princess seems here carry into the skirt. I love that. So you have a full skirt, side seam pockets. I'm assuming they're floppy pockets, but if you've, if you know me at all, you know that I don't do floppy pockets. And if I make this dress, I would be looking for a way to anchor the pockets probably into this seam here so they can't flop to the back and get real bunchy. So I'd probably make like a, I don't know, like a square shaped pocket. Who says your pocket has to be the shape of your hand? Who says it has to be rounded? It can be square. Um, and then we've got this really, I guess that's considered maxi length. Yeah, midi would be up here. So we've got a maxi length. We've got, that must be knee length. And again, the jewel neckline. Mm, I can't tell how long that one is. That might be the maxi. Could it be a midi? Who knows? That's the same as the green one, but it has the stand collar instead. I kind of like the stand collar. I'm not upset with it, um, especially for a spring pattern. But yeah, the finish just looks really clean, really simple, really easy. Yeah, this one's really intriguing, and I love that. I, I do believe that it is easy to sew. I'm I'm on board with that. Um, it looks like we just have a facing, maybe a lining. We can check the back of the envelope to see more about that. But yeah, the fit looks really good. I mean, she's obviously popped into this hip, which is why we're getting those wrinkles there. But um, considering we get two, two pictures to look at, um, you know, some issue here, but that could be just very specific to her body. I'm not seeing anything, you know, with the pattern, like, like if the arm side was too deep or not deep enough, these look like they have a pretty good fit, um, right out of the gate. So all, all in all, it looks really good. So suggested fabrics, chambray, cotton blends, cotton lawn, linen blends, and poplin. For sure, they're looking for mid-weight, kind of like mid-weight, stable-ish fabrics. They do have linen blends and cotton blends, which you could include like linen rayon and all of that. These will just be a little bit drapier, but they are still pretty stable, even though they have some drape. Um, that said, you could do this out of summer weight fabrics like seersucker, eyelet, 
Um, and then as we go into the fall, if you wanted to do some, these are, these are pretty much fall type fabrics too. Um, so yeah, pretty all inclusive there. But if you have anything that's like relatively stable, um, and has a little bit of weight to it, that would be best. Let me see about the lining. So we have three quarters to one yard of 45 inch wide lining for all views. So that makes me think, that makes me think it's just a facing and not, and not the whole bodice. So just facings, I think. Um, and then all you need is one invisible zipper. It says 26 inches. That's for the one with the neck, what is it called? Neck stand collar thing. You could get away with 22 inch zipper, I think, if you were doing it without the jewel neckline, I think. Um, I always find that the pat the zippers are really too long for these patterns. Anyway, that could be me though, because I'm a little bit short waisted. So I can usually get away with 18 or 20 inches myself and I can still get in, especially when there's the cutouts and the skirt is wide. Okay, so we have in the bust three and a half inches of ease. That's fine. I think it gives you a little bit of room that if you're in between sizes, you could safely size down. I would say two to three inches is probably where we want to be for a pattern that is designed like this. The waist has four inches of ease, which again, kind of hard to tell because those are the cutouts there. Um, so there is some wiggle room there. And then the hip should have plenty of ease. Yeah, eight inches, eight inches in the hip. So yeah, all of that seems really good. And I was just thinking too, while I was rambling on about all that, maybe it could be interesting to do color blocking where you do the top in one color and the bottom in another color. And these days, oh, I forget on the color wheel what they're called, but it's like when you have like grape, like purple and red, like fire engine red, or when you have like pink and orange, they're the ones that are like, I think very close to each other on the lit, on the color wheel. That could be kind of interesting or even like a black and white situation that would maybe make it a little bit more elegant. Yeah, you could have a lot of fun with this one. Good job. First one out. Is it first is best or are we going to keep getting better? Let's see. We have a Mrs. Corset pants and skirt. So corsets are sticking around. Line corsets with sweetheart neckline have boning, curved hemline, or peplum detail, optional ties and zipper closure, corset meaning a strap or strapless, fitted pants and skirt have back darts, invisible side seam zipper, and side pockets. Sizing, 8 to 16 and then 18 to 26. So the largest sizes they offer in the Mrs. range. So, oh yeah, a really kind of standard corset with the boning. Sweetheart neckline is really amazing. I love a sweetheart neckline. Um, I'm not much of a strapless girl, ah, but this one does look really pretty good. Um, hard to say though, with this still picture, we can't see if it's falling down and stuff like that. That's why I think I don't really love strapless, but with all that boning and if it's done right, you should be able to, it should hold itself up. Other options are the one with the straps, which is equally cute. I like that the straps are way, they start way out here. Do you see how it's in line with this outer seam? We have our center seam, the princess seam, and then this outer seam. And that's where the strap starts. So I think that's really elegant. And then the pants and the skirts, um, kind of a throwaway a little bit. Um, it's just a pencil skirt and the pencil pants do have a little bit of a kick out to them at the bottom. Do you see that? So it is quite an elegant outfit. I don't know. I, I definitely for special occasions, or if you're just somebody that likes to get really dressed up for regular things, I always ask myself, um, would I wear this to target? And this is, it's probably a no. I wouldn't wear this strapless one. Maybe, maybe that, especially in the summer, but with different bottoms. I would wear it with like baggy jeans. I would wear it with like a, you know, full kind of like um, ruffly type of skirt, like a layered and ruffly type skirt. I think adding the, the fitted kind of clean line trouser just gives you a more kind of elegant vibe overall. Okay, there's the back. 
Okay, invisible zipper is not really invisibling. But this has to be a separating zipper. I didn't know that they made invisible zippers that separated. And also, they live and work in the New York Garment District. They couldn't have found a yellow zipper. Seriously. I think I even have a yellow zipper just in my measly little stash that I have here. Um, but yeah, those are the darts in the back. The back of the pants look pretty good. No hands in pockets, thank you very much. And it's not pulling too much. Then again, she doesn't have much of a much of a bump, but really long darts, um, which I think is really nice. So yeah. Yeah, there's the pants. The pants look good. She might be yeah, she's kind of arching her back a little bit. Can you see that? That'll definitely alter the way that the pants fall. So I see what you're doing here. Tricky, tricky. But not tricky, not too tricky for me. Okay, so suggested fabrics for the tops. Brocade, chambray, chintz, damask, dupioni, poplin, sateen, satin, and shantung. So yeah, they're going for the really stable and verging on the lines of heavy weights. Very, very structured um, because they want that to help hold the corset up. The boning helps too, but if you have a drapey fabric, the boning can only do so much. Um, and then for the pants and skirt, chambray, cotton blends, fail, gabardine, sateen, stretch wovens, twill, wool, and, oh, I'm sorry, twill and wool blends. Um, so they probably, that yellow fabric, it felt like a little bit of a twill to me that could have made the top and the bottom out of twill, but sateen is in both categories. Um, you can absolutely make those pants and the skirt out of Dupioni as well. Damask to Damask on the pants mm, might be a little much, but uh, brocade could work for pants and the top. Um, stretch wovens, that's one thing you wouldn't want to make the top out of. You don't want anything stretchy on the top unless you size down, unless you size down and you knew it was going to be like, you know, sucking you in. Can you hear my side effect? <laughs> okay. Um, so featherweight boning, uh, separating zipper, and then same for the pants, another separating zipper, and then, okay, so just different zip sizes of zippers. Okay, got it. So ease in the pattern. Oh, they're not giving us finished garment measurements. Rude. You should be looking for like one inch in the bust. Same in the waist. And then the pants, uh, the waistband of the pants should fit like one or two inches as well. I hope that they have a plus a women's version of this so that I can see the strapped version. They usually make them out of alternate, they make like an alternate view for the plus size. Okay, so this one is women's and Mrs. and women's together. Are they doing that now? Not, maybe, maybe they're just combining them now. We have 10 to 18 and then 20 to 28 women's. So a 20 in women's is not the same as a 20 in misses. Keep that in mind. This is the tops and pants. Crew neck tops with cape element have three quarter sleeves, high low hem and keyhole back opening with button closure. Floor length pants have Front pleat, side seam pocket, button fly, zipper, and waistband with belt loops and button closure. I think I might love this. Look at that. So interesting. And you have the pleated, the pleated pant with the like pin tucked down the front. Interestingly enough, well, she's standing with her leg kicked out. So that's why this one looks flat. And then she's popped her hip into this, which is why we're getting these ruffles here, these wrinkles here. Hers is too small through here, but only on one leg. She might have her knee bent a little bit. I'm trying to look at her feet placement. But, and then a lot of extra fabric in the crotch area for her. Hopefully they showed us the back pictures. But I kind of think... I got to look at it closer. This little tail thing, I don't know. That could be really cool out of a different fabric. I'm not picturing this like 
kind of shiny, silky fabric. I'm picturing it out of something else, but I don't know what. Maybe like some kind of like, oh, like crocheted material, you know, and you wear a little tank top underneath. I don't know. I'm picturing something different but close. Also, I'm pretty sure the shoulder on this is way too long. This needs to be way up here on top of her shoulder like this. Um, and then, yeah, the length of it I think is fine. The neck looks fine. The shoulders on the women's patterns are always too long. Always. So, this one again could be up here. I really don't think it's a drop shoulder design. We'll check the line drawings, but I really don't think it is. Um, oh, and this lime green color. I don't know that that's the best color for her, but yeah, I don't, I, mm. <laughs> I'm just picturing the pants do look really sharp. I'm just picturing something a little more casual, a little more casual. And I don't know exactly what it is. And I may never know exactly what it is. And that's the problem with buying patterns like this with a specific idea in mind that you don't know the fabric for or you can't picture it exactly. But I don't know. Maybe some of you will have some ideas. Leave them in the comments. Okay. So here's the back. The back just looks like a tunic. I don't know. It looks so much more interesting from the front. Now I'm not sure. Maybe I don't like it now. I think the idea is very close to something that would be really, really cool and different and unique. Okay, line drawings are showing the shoulder seam going right to the edge of the shoulder. So still both of those were too long, but not by as much as I thought. So they're going to suggest lightweight drapey fabrics for the top, charmeuse, cotton lawn, crepe de chine, double georgette, and silky types. And then your bottom weights, but springtime bottom weights. So chambray, cotton blends, gabardine, lightweight wool blends, linen blends, stretch wovens. So something a little bit more structured, but um, the weight is appropriate for warmer temperatures. All right, so for the tops, you need bias tape and a button for the back keyhole. And then for the pants, you just need your zipper and three buttons. Ease wise, fit wise, there is a lot of room in the top, which makes perfect sense. And then the hip of the, I'm sorry, the waist has one and a half inches. Okay, that makes sense. And then the hip has, what is that? 30, uh, two and a half. Mm, yeah, two and a half. That could be part of the reason that there's an issue with the fit in the waist or in the thigh. I would probably ping this up just a little bit, um, maybe by like half, just within your seam allowances. I just take a smaller seam allowance on that for me personally, especially if you know you have like an athletic front thigh, um, take a bigger seam allowance there. Yeah, darn. I, I really, mm, this is enticing, I think because of the styling, oh, but I don't know. It's not fully translating to what I think I have in my head, but I don't even know what I have in my head. So that one's, that one's a maybe, I guess. Okay. Now we have a Mrs. Pants, Knit, Shrug, and Top. Sizing on this is 6 to 14 and 16 to 24. Again, right in the middle of their size range. Easy to sew pants. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I love the flare. Shrug and top pattern in sizes 6 to 24. One shoulder top with elastic at neckline. Okay, I'll explain that in a second. Has bands at armhole and hem. Relaxed fit shrug. Wide leg pants with contour waist. Seaming details and back pockets. Okay. So what we're looking at with the elastic at the neckline, it's almost like if you've ever done a sports bra or underwear where you have this little bit of elastic with just a teeny tiny bit of negative ease in it so that all of this kind of like contours to your body. Um, the little bands, I'm not really seeing bands and they're not showing us the hem so I'm not sure about that either but it looks like this might be a kind of rib knit and this might be like a mid-weight cotton. The shrug is a little not it. 
it is easy to sew. So if you just need a lit, like if your office is always really cold, just make one of these in like black that matches everything or whatever, you know, colors you wear a lot and just leave that at your, that would be an easy thing to just throw on at the office or like, you know, if you know that, oh, every time I go to church, it's really cold in there, but you don't need a full on anything. This would be easy enough to sew, but I don't know about it permanently being like part of the outfit. Not for me anyways. Okay. So this is a, a pant where the waist hits an inch below the natural waist. Like her natural waist is here. Here's the pants, which is why you're getting a contour. Okay. It still shouldn't dip though. So the contouring might be contouring too hard. Um, then you've got two buttons and a fly, a zip fly. So that's, I don't know about easy, easy to fit. Yes. Because all you really are fitting is this waistband uh, and the crotch curve. <laughs> Um, but a zipper fly, I wouldn't call that easy to sew, but it does have these interesting seams, these interesting seams. And I love the wide leg and I especially love the super deep hem. So yeah, I don't, I don't love one shoulder tops, but for the pants, maybe, maybe. Yeah, they can get a difference on the knit and the just jersey cotton jersey oh the pants out of a suiting fabric that could be really freaking cool especially if you paired that with that corset that that's more way more my speed um, the pants in like a traditional tan chino, kind of what they're showing here with a denim corset. That would be super cool. Or the corset out of the chino as well. That could be really sharp. Are you going to show us the back? Are you going to show us the hem of the shirt? Okay, here's the back. Oh, the pockets are interesting. I wasn't expecting that. Um, so all of this is cut all in one piece. That's interesting. Yeah, that is a really easy, cute little thing just to throw together. Um, and then, yeah, center back seam. I mean, sorry, center back leg seam. I think this is all continued through here. I don't know about the pockets. I guess it depends on the fabric. Having two layers there over your butt would be nice. But if you do a heavier weight fabric than they did, um, you wouldn't really need that, I don't think. The crotch curve looks pretty good. It's so baggy though. It's kind of hard to tell what's happening when you get into like the problem areas of a crotch curve. Yeah, the drape is really good. The shape of the leg is awesome. I really do like that. I don't know. Maybe I will make a one shoulder top. I like the pants. Okay, so for the top and shrug, stretch knits only like cotton lycra, interlock jersey, rib knits. You can make them out of the same fabric or mix them up like they did. And then for the, oh, and then, okay. So for the shrug, you can also use double knits and sweater knits. Yeah. I like that. Thank you for doing that. That is really helpful. Um, if y'all are watching, <laughs> uh, for the pants, corduroy, cottons, crepe, denim, linens. Yeah. Like I said, but also like kind of like the lighter weight suiting fabrics. Imagine like a pinstripe. Oh my God, that would be so freaking cool. What do I have in my stash? Oh gosh. I, I bet it takes so many yards. How many yards for the pants? See, one inch below waist. Six, oh, I mean, I'm like a 20. So th more than three yards. Eek! I don't know if I have more than three yards of anything in my stash. Maybe, but maybe not the right weight. Darn. Okay. Anyways, um, fitting wise, we should have negative ease in the top. Yes, we have one and a half inches of negative ease. Perfect. The shrug should have positive ease, which it does in the bust. Um, negative ease in the waist. No, there's two inches of positive ease. That's kind of a lot, but you could kind of shave that out if you wanted. Or again, took like just take a quarter inch bigger seam allowance and that would nip that right in. And then the hip for the pant is huge. Not huge, but it's just a lot. A lot of ease. Actually, 32 to 30. They're only saying four inches of ease. There's no way. That can't be right. And that makes me doubt all the rest of these numbers, but 
I'm going to, I'm going to trust, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to trust them verify. <laughs> That's what they say in like, um, oh, let me look at this. That's what they say in like, uh, news, trust them verify. Um, that's the little baby him there. And then this is hemmed up just like the shrug was. Yeah. I don't know. That one might be a standout. All right. Now we've got, right. This is the next one. Yep. This is Mrs. Pants in two lengths and short. <laughs> so it's really pants in three lengths. Okay, so sizing is 8 to 16 and 18 to 26. Easy to sew pants and shorts for misses features large shaped pockets, optional contrast top stitching, back dart zipper closure, view A are long shorts, view B are cropped pants. We are getting a lot of pants this season. Okay, pants and pockets on her. Are they the same girl? Are they the same girl? Yes. Or they could be sisters. Hard to tell. She does not have her hands in her pockets and they're, they're, they're fine. They're not doing anything weird. I would much prefer this pose over this pose any day. Um, just so that we can see how everything's laying. This is like making things pull and look weird. And so I don't understand that pose. At least just tuck your thumbs in, you know, so we can see what it looks like without all this bulk. But all that to say, I think that, oh, and then the longer pants have this extra bit. It's not one piece. The, the the long shorts, I don't know, mostly because they're like flaring out like this and flaring out like this. And plus they're like really tight in her thigh and then they flare out. I don't know. The fit on those is throwing me. They're not like a walking short. Like, I don't know. Those, I, those aren't it. But the pants are pretty cool. Crotch curve wise, there's clearly something going on here um, and it's pointing to the front crotch. I think um, it, it something's wrong with the front crotch on her, on her. Um, yeah, that's the same pose. Okay. See the pants, the shorts here look kind of more straight line, but on her, maybe because she had her hands in her pockets. Gosh, that really does mess things up a little bit. So you can see, okay, here's the, okay, well, hold on a minute. Now this looks fine. This is why the pants and pockets thing is a problem. We need another pocket. This is just strange, just only having the one. And the crotch curve in the back, can you see how it's been stretched and wrinkled um, just through her like sitting and waiting to take pictures and whatever, and then also pulling here. So the shape of it is not right for her. I'm pretty, I, I wonder, I guess they use probably a standard crotch curve shape, right? Do people, does anyone know that? If they use, like, it's the same on every pattern. Um, because some of them I see and it's like, whoa, no, that's, something's definitely off there. This one could just be off because of the shape of her body. This is small enough of a fitting issue that it could just be. She has a bit of a bubble butt, and so that's why we're getting a little tightness through here. It's just fuller, you know. Um, anyways, so then here's the pant on her, and we've obviously got way too much in the inseam on the pant. If all of this were, if the crotch, what am I saying? If the crotch depth were a little bit longer, all of this would be gone. Pants are hard, you guys. They're not for everyone. But honestly, honestly, if you went out in pants like this, literally no one would know that they don't, quote unquote, fit exactly perfect. This would be good enough for me and for a lot of people. But, um, you know, if you're looking for perfection, then yeah, you're probably going to have to make some adjustments to the depth here, I think. And then this is where the, the capri, the shorter pants would end. It feels like it would, they would end at like full calf. And I don't know. I don't know. Capris are having a moment again, but then I'd have to start wearing heels again. And you know, I'm just, I don't know about that. Okay. Shally denim, linen, poplin, sateen, and twill. Yeah. All of your bottom weight fabrics. It's pretty structured, pretty sturdy, um, just to get that shape that they're looking for there. And then a zipper, a button, and contrasting thread. 
Um, okay. Waist measurement has two and a half inches of ease. It sits one inch below the waist. Is that what they say? No, sometimes they say that if it sits one inch below the waist, but this one they don't. Um, and then for the hip, we're looking at uh, three and a half inches, which further proves that the other pants that are so wide leg are definitely don't have four because those and this don't look anything alike. There's no way that that pant fits through here and then flares out. It's flared from up here. So any hoozles. Um, so yeah, I think that's a cute option. Again, the zipper fly, not bad. I've definitely seen worse. Definitely seen worse. Okay, so good grief, where are we? Um, here we are. So we have a family set. <laughs> it's a family set of blazers and shorts. I mean, why on the the ranch would you possibly want your entire family in the same pants and shorts? It's giving cult. Honestly, it's giving like, it's giving creepy, creepy. <laughs> Create these easy to sew blazers and shorts for the whole family in matching or coordinating fabrics. Oh my gosh. Matching. Can you imagine everybody in the same? No, no. I don't care if you're doing family photos. No, is the answer. Oversized button front blazer with long or short sleeves. Oh, a short sleeve blazer. Oh, there it is right there. Um, has notched collar and pockets. Shorts have fly front zipper with, oh my gosh. I mean, she's ready for work, you guys. And furthermore, it's a shorts set. It's, I mean, you could make pants. That would help a little bit, but yeah, he's the only one that knows. He's like, this is weird. I cannot wait to break out of this polygamy cult that I am in. Lord save me. They've been drinking the juice for a long time. And poor thing, she's just too sweet of an angel to even know that there's evil in the world. Okay, now that I've fully assessed the family, um, it's not even a good fitting blazer for a woman. I would never wear that fitting like that. That's like lab coat. Just way too big because guess what? It was made for a man. Well, even on his, it's way too big. No. I don't know. That whole idea of it is just really strange. Hers fits okay. Ironically, his fits the best. I can't even. I can't even. Like, whose idea was it? Who signed off on this? <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Now we have, oh, cute, a little cargo skirt. Mid-rise cargo mini skirts with pocket variations have optional tie belt, back darts, fly front zipper, and zipper closure. Okay, so zipper, I mean, so cargo, what am I saying? Cargo skirts have are nothing new to sewing patterns. We have um, a couple of really good indie options. And I think, didn't Brittany from Nomi make one last last year, last spring or something. This one is a little bit different because the cargo pockets are very specific. Like this one holds what your chapstick. That's like the, that's like the PC thing I can say. I'm thinking of other things related to what I can't talk about on YouTube. Um, that rhymes with, um, schmollets. <laughs> and then you have a little zipper here with these, these little interesting things for your hammer. Is that where your hammer goes? Or what else that would be more practical? If we have chapstick in here, um, you attach your keys to this, obviously. Um, and then in here you would put your curling iron, something with a hook, something, um, maybe you could clip on your hair clips, your banana clips, you could clip those. So, <laughs> and then this one has like, no one's getting into these pockets because they have that kind of strappy thing that you have to undo just to get in. And then side patch pockets that are kind of like 3D. 
<laughs> I'm making fun of it, but it is really cute. It is fun, different, unique, interesting, which I like. Basics with a twist. That's me. Okay, are we going to get any more pictures of her? Oh, yeah. We get the back view. The back view looks great. The back view looks great. The bottom hem is even. This is even. It's not too tight. It's not pulling. It looks awesome. Cute little skirt pattern. All right, so bottom weights. Broadcloth, chambray, chino, cotton blends, denim, gabardine, linen blends, stretch wovens, and twill. And then a ton of notions. I'm not going to go through all of them because they're very specific to whichever skirt, but nothing out of the ordinary here. And then for finished garment measurements, we have um, in, oh, we only get the hip. So two, three inches of ease in the hip. Yeah, that feels fair. I wouldn't go less than that. I wouldn't go less than that. And then the waist should have like one or two whenever you get to that point. So cute, fun. And I bet it's a really good stash buster too. Let me see how much fabric it takes. So yeah, one and a half yards, almost one and a half to one and three quarters for just about any size and any variation. So good little option there. Cute. Okay, now we have, why does it do it right sometimes and other times it doesn't do it right? And I have to scroll. Ooh. This looks fancy. Slim fit corset has square neckline, boning, side zipper closure, and contrast variations. Corset can be made with straps or strapless and has optional back ties. This is giving like, like red carpet. This is definitely a going out top. The new going out top. These do not do it justice. These look like weird boob holders. Oh, wait, I guess that is a weird boob holder. This one is smooth, and these have, like, a little bit of, you know, gathering. I think that they futzed with it too much and made it too perfectly straight, which is why I'm having kind of an issue visualizing it. I think it's supposed to be a little bit more just ruched all over. Um, but, okay, so anytime they show us something that feels really elegant, and I'm like, I would never wear it to Target like that. I picture it in denim. That helps me see anything in the most casual version it can possibly be in. So picture this in denim, right? It would be still dressy denim. There'd still be a lot going on. But maybe this version would be better just in denim where you have like the little, you know, it's really like a boob holster. Um, so that could be interesting. I can't believe I have two corsets in one release from one pattern company. That's so interesting. Oh, with a full on lace up detail option. That's what they meant. This is optional. You don't have to do this, but if you want to give it that, you know, truly a corset vibe. And honestly, it probably helps with fit a little bit. You can see how hers is kind of buckling a little bit. So it's a side zipper and this. So you don't tie this up every time either. Thank you very much. You would do it once, leave it. Hopefully this little ribbon holds together and then your zipper's over here somewhere. Yeah, okay. Okay. See optional back ties. Interesting, okay. So these are gonna be the same as the other corset. Yep. Um, and then it's fully lined. Is that what that means? No. Mm. Close to, mm, it might be fully lined. This extra little bit might just be for the strapping. So yeah, talk about a scrap buster, my gosh. And then contrast B. I'm going to look at the other line drawings to see that. Upper front, middle front, and then C. Okay, finished garment measurements in the bust are half an inch. Yep, okay, let's look at these other line, oh, there they are, other line drawings. Oh, I see. 
right, they did the gold with the, yeah, the inset. That wasn't super obvious, so I'm glad that I caught that. Yeah, so a smooth top or a funky one. Interesting. I don't know. I want to like the the uniqueness and the attention to detail and kind of like special, like it looks complicated, right? I want to, I want to like that. I really do. I have to think of what an outfit for it. Okay, so this is Mimi's new pattern. And look, they got Brittany up here. Okay, pull over draped top with front shoulder pleats. Pull over draped top with front shoulder pleats. Okay, have wide waistband and flange sleeves. Yes, relaxed fit crop pants have elastic waistband and ties at the front and patch pockets. This is in women. So alphanumeric sizing, extra small to extra large, and then 1X to 5X. I want to see what that means. That feels bigger than what they usually do. But it is Mimi, so she's usually the most size inclusive of all the patterns, of all the designers at Simplicity, not at Nomi. There's the flange sleeve. This is more like a cowl. There's the dedicated band. And then like a wide leg sweatpants situation. And then there's Brittany's crop top and pants. So you can see how Brittany is shorter waisted. So hers is not as cropped as Mimi's is. Mimi's has a little bit of space in between. Brittany's does not. And also is billowing here, which is, I don't think, um, supposed to happen. It's like definitely work from home ready. You know, you look fancy from, you know, your Zoom, but you've still got basically sweatpants on. <laughs> Um, no, no real good pictures there, huh? I mean, from what I can see, sorry, Brittany, for zooming in on your butt, but from what I can see, the curve looks good. There's a little bit of this, but I think she's standing on that leg, yeah. So that could just be because she's got this hip popped. And just a little bit long through here, if you are making the women's sizes. But yeah, we don't get a full on back shot. So I do love how she does her waistbands. I feel like that's the right way to do them. And that's what she does every time. So yeah, definitely. I definitely would wear that to Target. There's no doubt about it. What happened? Um, so what fabrics? Stretch knits only like bamboo, cotton knit flins, ITY, jacquard, jersey, and rib knit. And then also in B, bamboo, cotton blends, double knit, interlock, jersey, rib knit, sweatshirt, fleece, terry knit. I don't know. I am a big fan of them separating out the different top and bottom fabric choices. But I kind of feel like these could be all in one. You could definitely make the top out of sweatshirt fleece. No? You might have to. The, maybe the reason why they did that is because of the band. Because sweatshirt fleece isn't going to stretch that much. So then you would just use a rib knit band. You know what I mean? But not the whole thing in rib knit. Unless you wanted a really lightweight situation happening. Yeah, like jersey. Even the midweight jersey from Stylemaker Fabrics would be like, it'd look like a t-shirt. Which you wouldn't really want that on your bottom. I mean, you could. Yeah, I was just picturing sweatshirt fleece, something way more stable. I don't know why. Maybe because that's what they used. I don't know. Um, it's hard for me to imagine it in something lighter weight and drapier. Like, well, I'm wearing pants similar to, like, they're, I guess they're a sweater knit. Maybe a double knit. I don't know what they are, but they're like, well, they look kind of ribbed. Maybe like a heavyweight rib knit. That could be cool, but I definitely want them to match the same. So anyways, I'm just rambling now. All right, so we're not going to get finished garment measurements because it's the full size range, but this does go up to 38W. Four, it's like the smallest uh, Mrs. size, and it goes up to a 38W. So that's about as inclusive as it gets. Body measurement wise, that's going to take your bust up to a 60 and the hip up to a 62. That's as, that's as inclusive as the most inclusive indie pattern designers 
are doing. So that's this is what they should aim for size wise. That should be the goal to keep up with everybody else. Okay, now we've got uh, lounge tops, pants, and shorts. Sizing um, alphanumeric, extra small to 2X. I think that's their entire Mrs. range. Lounge around with this cozy set. Loose fitting top with deep V-neck opening. Has length and sleeve variations. Long sleeves with wide cuffs or short sleeves with ruffles. Relaxed fit pants have shorts, elastic waistband, and front ties. Is this a knit pattern? No, it's woven. Huh. Okay. Why is I'm like looking at is this like a funky editing error? Why is this leg three inches longer or shorter than this leg? What is happening? And maybe it's just she's got her knee bent so it looks different. I thought she had her um heel up but I don't think she does anyways so yeah I again don't really understand why we couldn't wear this out especially like in a double gauze that would be so cute we've got the v-neck with a little tie and the above bust gathers um drop shoulder see this is what a drop shoulder illustration looks like it literally comes down you can see it um, big full sleeve, big sleeve cuff, or you've got this little ruffle and then just an elastic waist pant or short with side slits. The shorts with this going out in like a, like a solid double knit. Uh, yeah. This is not lounge wear. This is for me. This is like, I'm going out, not out, out, but just to like run errands. Oh, yeah. Wow, it's so interesting. Oh, her legs are better. Uh, that other one just was really throwing me off. Although this one is a little bit longer still, but she is standing on that leg. So, um, yeah, this looks really good. Again, standing on the leg, so it's really hard to tell. This one's popped to make a knee. So, again, super hard to tell. I don't know why they can't just stand straight up and down. Um, but super cute. Imagine this in a lightweight chambray set with the shorts. Why is this going to be my favorite pattern <laughs> from the whole collection? Um, Charmeuse, cotton blends, cotton lawn, crepe de chine, double Georgette, gauze, poplin, sear, sucker, silky types, and voile for sure. May voile can be a little lightweight for bottoms um, to wear out. They are great for lounging around, but if you want to wear this out in public, um, all of this would work lawn lawn could work it'd be a little thin for the shorts crepe would work especially a midweight crepe i have some of that um double georgette yeah anything doubled is good double gauze or regular well not regular gauze double gauze would be better poplin for sure seersucker for sure that would look a little more pajama y i think seersucker is very pajama like um and then silky types would be okay in either the top or the bottom. I mean, where at staying home or going out, it would just be a little bit dressier. So I would stick with the cotton blends. I would stick with even like linen. Linen's not an option because I don't think you'd like hang around in linen, but linen would be really great to go out in. Sh chambray, double gauze, all of that would look really cool. IMO, in my opinion. So elastic and tool tape is all the only notions you need. 4 to 26 on the number size range, which is equivalent to double, I'm sorry, it was equivalent to extra small to 2XL, and then no finished garment measurements, don't know why, but the top, one and a half to two yards, and the shorts and pants, one and a half to three yards, so not very expensive to make, considering there's so much volume in this top as well. Okay, here's Norris. Um, men's robe, knit tank top, pants, and shorts. Comfy and stylish. Create this easy to sew lounge set for men. Pattern includes robe, tank top, pants, and shorts. Oversized fit robe has drop shoulder sleeves and belt. Full on pants and shorts have elastic waistband and side pockets. 
Norris coming in, making it look chic to hang out at home. I wish, I wish my man looked this good at home. Um, so, robe, sweatshirt fleece. I do like this deeper hem that he does on his sweatshirt fleece. That is what I think was missing from Mimi's sweatshirt fleece pants. The, I like the deep hem. And it's kind of like a shorty short for guys. You know, most guys like wear them down here. So I like the idea of a shorty short. Um, then he made a jersey tank top. I think these are also jersey pants. The hem is different, see? And then the robe. Maybe a French terry. Maybe the robe and the shorts are the same and the tank and the pants are the same fabric. Maybe. But yeah, that seems like a really cute stay from home. Why can't guys look great staying from home too? There's no excuse. Um, so cotton knits, jersey, lightweight double knits, sweatshirting, waffle knits. Waffle knit, yeah. Um, and then D for the robe, also in chambray, flannel, and poplin. Yeah, I mean, I like it for a woman, too. There's no reason why this can't be unisex. But alphanumeric sizing for the men means a chest size of 34 inches up to 52 inches. And it looks like his shirt was really oversized. So A has... what I think would be 10 inches of ease in it. I, I may be reading that wrong. I don't know menswear very well. Um, and then I have no idea. Oh, the hip is here. So 37, so two and a half inches in the hip. So very, very oversized tank top. So if you're not, if you're like a 30 inch bust or whatever, you could definitely still make this. There's plenty of ease in there. Very loose fitting. Okay. Oh, I know why I've seen this. Okay, I was like, this looks familiar. I get it. Okay, I'll tell you in a second. Full skirted, belted dress in two lengths, has square neckline, can be strapless with or with, strapless or with straps, side seam pockets, and invisible zipper. View A has boning. Okay, so cute little um, fitted to flare dress with the belt, with or without straps. They put on Instagram, bless their hearts, on Simplicity's Instagram, so the look and it was this dress that literally looked nothing like this dress except for they had the same belt and i was like what like that's not even the same the skirt didn't have ruffles it wasn't spaghetti strap like literally they both had belts and maybe they both were mac midi maxi length that was it that was literally the only different the only similarities i was like uh that's a bit of a reach guys <laughs> um but yeah pockets this would be really cute for like a wedding um, rehearsal dinner or even to swap out of it for swap out of your wedding dress into this for the parte. That could be really cute with some like, you know, lace with underlining and lining. That would be really cute. And then you have like the casual day dress. Now, don't get me wrong. I like this, but it isn't anything like that other one they were showing. Um... I like a self belt. I always have. Anytime anything's made in a self belt, it just looks so much more polished and put together. I have to look at her shoes. I was like, how is she in those? It's this little, very thin, clear strap. And that's it. There ain't no way you're walking around in those, Mimi. How is that staying on your foot? There's no strap here. I don't believe it just flip flopping around everywhere in your high heels that are barely hanging on. No, ain't nobody got time for that. Oh, she has a massive shoe collection. If you've ever seen her stuff on Instagram. All right. So suggested fabrics, chalet, chambray, crepe lawn, lightweight, sateen, satin, silky types. So what, uh, we have fusible. It must be fully lined. No, only the bodice is lined. So when I'm looking at that, this makes me think, this is structured. This is not drapey at all. Nice work on the blind hem also. I think that's it right there. Maybe it's not blind. I think it's a very deep hem. So yeah, the, for the same reason that those corset patterns wanted us to use structured fabrics, 
I wouldn't use any of these. Maybe for the one with the straps, you could get away with all of this stuff. But the strapless ones, I would want to use those boning fabric or the corset fabrics that they suggested in the other patterns. Something with a lot more structure to it. Um, there is boning in there. But again, just like they wanted you to use a structured fabric, just any little bit that you can do to help keep that up for the strapless version um, would help. And then also, um, if you did one of these and you wanted it to be a little bit more poofy, like a cupcake, like this one is, you could just line the whole thing and that would help. Give it that structure that it needs, even out of these lighter weight fabrics. Shally though, Shally's always going to Shally. Shally's just going to be lightweight and drapey, but these other ones for sure. Okay. So finished garment measurements in the bust. Oof. Two and a half inches of ease for a strapless dress. No, no. Mm -mm. That is not, no, that's not staying up. Even if you have all the boning in the world. No. I'd refer to the sizing of the corsets. This this whole thing feels off, and I don't know if it's just a mistake or what, but. And then th two inches in the waist. That does make sense, especially with the help of that belt. The belt will help keep it up too, but still, two and a half inches of ease. And, and yeah, that's too much. You need it to be a little bit fitted, a, little, a way more fitted than that. It needs to be fitted. Um, and that's kind of like semi-fitted. Mrs. Dress with sleeve and length variations. Sizing 4 to 12 and 12 to 20. So the smallest end, end of their size range. Features sweetheart neckline with strap detail, elastic shoulder straps, puffed or flutter sleeves, and back shirring. Now I'll be the judge if it's really shirring or if they do cheater shirring still. They, that's what they've been doing all along. I'll talk to you about that when we get to the back of the envelope. But dress has side seam pockets and invisible side zippers. Separate pattern pieces for A, B, C, and D cups. So you can get a really good fit there. So what you can barely see is this little bar. This little bar going across. So it is a sweetheart with that little extra something something and then you've got the elastic waist the elastic shoulder on the sleeve and the hem and then fitted you know like a princess seam and then a simple sweet kind of trumpety type of skirt or you can have the sleeve that comes off the shoulder and has the little strap detail so only two versions of this really sweet springtime dress so if you're going to like horse races or garden party or a wedding or anything like that this is really right up the alley okay so this is not shirring i can already tell you this is elastic casings that's not shirring shirring is using elastic thread i don't know why they can't just get us to do the regular shirring why do they do it this way this way looks cool on this one um but it's definitely not shirring. And it's also way too long. Can you see all this bunching? That's because the skirt wants to stop up here, as it should, at her natural waist. Nice deep hem again. Okay. So, chalet, crepe, lightweight poplin, linen type, sateen, silky type, soft cotton types. And then for lining, polyester and rayon. How much is lined? Just the, just the back panel, I think. Maybe the whole front bodice, but definitely that back panel with all the elastic casings. That's how you're making those. So you do need an invisible zipper, elastic, elastic, elastic. Yep. Um, so fit-wise, uh, this might... Okay, so they're saying that there is four inches of ease in the bust, but I think that's pre shirring I think the shirring brings that in a lot more. I think it, the finish is finished pattern pieces without any gathering considered, I think. Because if not, then that's a lot. 
Um, in the waist, there's two and a half inches. Oh, no, sorry. In the waist, there's one inch. And then the hip is really roomy. So, so yeah. So maybe check the bust measurements just to make sure. But cute, pretty, can be elegant, can be youthful, can be all the things. Love that. Okay, here's the women's version of that pattern. So you can see the alternate view. Right? Cute little sleeve. Now this one is giving me a lot more like date night, going on a cruise, an Italian vacation. You know what I mean? Something like that. You could definitely put this one with sneakers. This little polka dot version is so cute. Right? Isn't that sweet? Can't you see that with like white sneakers and just like tooling around town? Yeah, this one's unassumingly really, really wearable. And now, hold on one more thing. Okay, this is holding on for dear life. Probably because, for whatever reason, they put all the straps on the women's sizes way too far out. Same reason why the shoulder seams are so long. So, I don't know. It could probably start up here. I would move this, and I would put it up here. So it comes closer to this way, and then wants to stay on your shoulder more, and it's also just a little bit too long. But... Easy fixes for you to do at home on that one. How's the length on the bodice? That looks better. Better. Still a little bit, a little bit too long by about half an inch or so, but not as bad as the misses. Okay. Love that. All right. Now we've got vintage dresses in two lengths. Look at her. They are all ready to go. 1960s one piece dress in two lengths, lined dress with side zipper is pleated to one shoulder over which a self fabric bow is draped. View one is ankle length and has a left side slit. View two is regular length. Okay. Princess seams draped to here. I mean, if you're doing like a vintage type of wedding, please, that could be something you wear for any event even the actual wedding I think so pretty this one's really cute cocktail dress for the winter time yeah there's the long link with the slit show me the back okay the back does have fisheye darts so just really prettily shaped kind of column dress a little bit of shaping for the waist and then this detail on one shoulder. Brocade, cotton blends, crepe, linen. What is this? Peau de Suisse? Did I say that right? I think I did. PK, satin, silky prints, silk shantong, silks, geez, synthetics, and blends, velveteen, and voile. Voile? I don't know about voile. Voile seems a little lightweight. Um, but yeah, I think anything like mid-weight and up. Pretty structured. And then one zipper and bias binding. 6 to 24 on the size range. I don't think I said that before. Finished measurements. Okay. So we have two and a half inches of ease in the bust. Okay. With a little bit of wiggle room to take it in, I think. The waist has two inches. That's great. And the hip has two and a half as well. So maybe a little bit more in the hip and a little bit less in the bust, which you could easily adjust just with seam allowances. But yeah, they have reworked this so that it fits now up to a 46 inch bust. Cute. Okay, next we have this little number 1960s one piece and two piece so dress sewing pattern dress view one over blouse what i'm assuming this was say dress in view one and over blouse in view two. Oh boy feature high round neckline front yoke with a slit opening at center front neck edge 
the low elbow length kimonos type sleeves. Okay. Seam is tapered to a point at the center front where yoke joins lower front section. Oh my gosh. V1 has slightly curved self fabric belt in back, which buttons to side front. <laughs> There's so many, so many explanations in this. View 2 has a separating zipper in the back. Slim skirt dart fitted at waistline has left side zipper closing. Okay, so. Oh, it's three pattern pieces. The dress, the skirt, and then this over blouse, they're calling it. I get it now. I thought it was this over this. And I was like, what? Why? No. And this is how they're just explaining how the top is constructed. So you have this little peak at the front. And then this is all one piece. Very Jackie O. I want to see the back with that little thing. Well, I mean... It doesn't do the most, but it does have fisheye darts, I think. This is a little over shirt. That must not be fisheye darts then, because it would be here too, I think. Four darts across the back. I love that. Blends cotton suede. Cotton suede? What is that? It's supposed to be cotton comma suede? No, cotton suede cottons. Crepe double knits, flannel, homespun, jersey, linens. Jersey? Okay, linens, PK, sailcloth, shantung, textures, <laughs> wools, and wool blends. I don't what I don't know what any of that is. Half of this stuff I don't think is even made anymore, or has a different name, or goes by a different name. Uh, no finished garment measurements, but yeah, bias binding, shoulder pads, button, zipper, zipper, zipper. Yeah, this just feels like no matter how you made it, it would look like it was made in the 60s. Whereas the last one, I think you can make it very modern really easily. Okay, now we've got this little number. This is top. 8 to 16, 18 to 26. Relaxed fit, gathered top features V neckline with long puff sleeves, gathered in cuffs or short puff sleeves with bands. Okay, so I think it's intended for Swiss dot, which is what this is, or clip dot, if you watched the um, Stylemaker Fabric swatch video, all that clip dot, that's what this is. And then any lining, they chose to go with a contrasting color um, for the bodice, the cuffs, and the bow. So I think they're trying to go a little coquette with this. I'm just trying to take it in tucked in to jeans like that. I don't know that this is the right styling. But untucked is definitely not it either. I think it needs a trouser, like one of those white trousers they had. But maybe also not be lavender. <laughs> I like purple. I love purple. But that, that just makes it so specific to like Easter. Okay, that's probably, maybe, yeah, without the bow. Ah, it just feels really blousey, like really big to be tucked in like this. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't need to be this big if the intention is to tuck it in. If the intention is to wear it out, it does need to be that big, but I don't think that's what they were going for. I think I finally figured out how I'm doing that magic trick. I did it a bunch last time, and I think, oh, no. That's huge. That should just be a dress. This is now a dress pattern. It's not a top pattern. It's a dress pattern. Tucking it. I did it again. Tucking it in. Um, tucking it in no matter what kind of pants you've got on, it's going to look funky. It's just too voluminous. I mean, look at all this. Thank you so much for this picture. Normally you would never give me this picture. So thank you. Um, but yeah, it's just too oversized, I think, for a top. But I think a dress, it could be really, really sweet. So let's let's picture that together, okay? So imagine, well, are they going to give us a wide? No, we don't get a wide shot. So what do we do? Um, imagine this would be what it looks like. It would just be like a little bit longer, right? Way cuter, even with the bow then. Because then it's not competing with the bottoms. It's not trying to like force all this volume into a waistband 
um, just make it a dress. Okay. Okay. Good talk guys. Good meeting. Good meeting. Okay. Cotton lawn, dotted Swiss, gauze, lace, novelty, sheer and wall. Yeah. Fun way to use up all those sheer fabrics. You're always like, what am I going to do with these? Great way to use them up. And then the contrast in cotton blends, crepe de chine, linen blends, poplin, or shirtings. Yeah, depending on how structured you wanted it to be underneath, you could also just do a lining fabric, like a silky lining fabric or silky type. Um, these are all a little bit structured, which it definitely does not have to be. Four buttons is all you need for the view A. View B needs no notions. No notions. Finish garment measurements. Look at all this. That's 31... 41, 51, almost 20 inches of ease in the bust. That's wild. That's wild. So I'm, I usually cut a 16. So that can be 58 inches. No, it's more than that. 64 inches. No, I wouldn't do that. I would do, if I'm normally making a 38 bust, that's still 20 inches if I made a size eight. And the width of the lower edge is basically what the hip measurement is. That's gigantic. I'm all for... I could make this in a size 8. And it would still fit me. Like a cute little shift dress. No, swing dress. Oh, shoot. I get them confused. Um, you know, a little straight, kind of boxy little dress. It doesn't need to be that big. It doesn't need to be that big. Yikes. I feel bad. People are going to buy this in their size, make it in their size, and they're going to be drowning. No wonder they tucked it in. To remind people, oh, there's a womanly body under here. Yeah, that's a lot. Oh man, yeah, I would hem and haw about what size to make. I could make any of these. <laughs> so, yeah, wow. Okay, next, Mrs. Beach cover up and robe. Cute. Just three sizes. Collarless above knee length beach cover up. Or robe has slightly lowered round neckline, long raglan sleeves gathered with elastic casings forming self ruffles and optional patch pockets. View one, two, three with front button closing have optional rick rack trim, naturally. Um, four, five, and six with optional embroidered eyelet edging trim has front gathered yoke. What? What is they call? They're calling it a beach thing and a robe? Why isn't this just the cutest little mini dress I've ever seen? Why isn't it a mini dress? Okay, this is not going to go to the beach, these sleeves. Who's wearing that at the beach? Long sleeves? No. But like, that's just a cute, oh, there's no buttons under here. Okay, well, I picture this where you're, it doesn't open in the front. That's just a cute little dress, right? Interesting. I don't fully understand the long sleeves at the beach thing, but maybe, I don't know, global warming, like it wasn't as warm in the 60s. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Where the beach is not as hot. Oh, wait, does it say beach? It says beach. I was going to say maybe it just says cover up, which could also be another way of looking at a robe. No, it definitely says beach. I don't understand. It's just a cute dress to me. One, four, two, three, four, five, six. What? What is the difference? I know they explained it. Hold on. Let me read that carefully. One, two, and three with front button closing have optional rickrack trim. Four, five, and six with optional eyelet trim. That's it. So why are all of these? What? What? I'm so confused by this one. I thought I was getting the hang of vintage patterns, but this makes no sense. So these are the different trims, I guess. And then no trim, maybe? I don't know. Okay, so here's what you're wearing to the beach, okay? Canvas, cotton sateen, cottons and blends. Oh, dotted Swiss. So that's light, that's sheer, okay? Duck. Even if it's a robe, 
even if it's a robe. Is robe like a different term back then? I'm not wearing a robe in canvas or duck. Um, eyelet, okay. Homespun, linen at the beach, okay. PK, no. Poplin, no. Wall, maybe. Synthetic and blends and then terry cloth. So, okay, I get it. Some of those were sheer fabrics, which you just couldn't tell from the illustration, which sheer long sleeves at the beach is still a choice, but okay. But this duck and canvas for a robe? I don't know. I don't know. Here are your notions, including all that rickrack and those other trimmings, and then no finished garment measurements, but supposedly 31 and a half inch bust up to 40 inch bust. It did look really loose fitting, like maybe 10 or 15 inches of ease. So you'd be playing around with that. Yeah, I, I think it's just a cute dress. I don't know about wearing it to the beach or as a robe. This is our last one. And wow, what a showstopper. Okay. 6 to 14 and 16 to 24. Vintage Simplicity's 1950s one piece dress sewing pattern. What does that mean, one piece? Does that mean, oh, because back in the day, you, I don't know. I thought all dresses were one piece. I'm so confused. The collar and bodice of this sleeveless dress are cut in one. The collar and bodice are cut in one. Love that. The bodice has lapped front closing above center front seam right here. And the collar is tapered at center back out here. So it doesn't come around like that. It just cuts off. Patch pockets are, wait, patch pockets trim flared skirt. View one has soutache braid trim. View two top stitch pockets are buttoned to skirt. Okay. I love a halter top dress with a collar. Like just absolutely love it. And then I don't know what the soutache trim is. Does anybody else? But this one has the little button you can see there. Waist darts, bust darts. And yeah, it's just a, I think a two-piece skirt, but it's very full. Oh, I bet they have the stuff under it normally. The crinoline stuff. Were they wearing that in the 50s still? Um, oh yeah, and that little detail is really cute too. Cotton, denim, linen, PK, rayon, taffeta, tissue fail. You too. Butcher linen, chambray, lengthwise striped or plain cotton. Lengthwise, not widthwise. PK, rayon, and taffeta. I don't know why all of these couldn't be together. Um, zipper or snaps, hook and eye, belt buckle, belt backing, button, soutache braid, three buttons. Okay. Finished garment measurements. We have three and a half inches of ease in the bust. Okay, wiggle room to size down. Waist has one inch of ease and the hips are very full. So they don't talk about this being, you know, having a lining or anything that would make it floofy. So I think when we would wear it normally, depending on the fabric, it would just fall down. I think it's kind of a version of a circle skirt, which is giving it the volume. Okay, I think it's adorable. And I also think this would just make an amazing just like top all by itself. The line drawings are hard to see, but imagine if this were as angled, you know, and it just came down. You had like, I don't know, three or four inches of ease in the waist instead. Beautiful little top. Just put a little zipper on the side. Right? How do you get into this? Is there a side zipper? It doesn't say, but I'm guessing side zipper. And I didn't even notice that there was like a little self belt until I read the notions thing. That's cute. I like that one. Okay. So that is it for Simplicity Spring. Make sure I got them all. Overall, a pretty decent collection. I didn't have a lot of bad stuff to say this time, and I don't think I'm just in a particularly good mood. I think that this is really strong collection. 
Um, obviously, if this is just inherently not your style, you're not going to like it. But if you like stuff that's a little bit, this feels a little bit like, like it could go from business to weekend to special event. Like a lot of these patterns have a lot of wearability for a lot of different occasions, which I think is really nice to have in one sewing pattern so that you can have some versatility and not have to have the most enormous stash in the history of stashes. But with that said, I'd like to know what you think. So leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. I always love reading them and hearing other opinions. Um, so go ahead and do that. And that'll be it for me today. I'll see you all very soon. Okay, bye.